For now, what preoccupies the clan is the onset of winter. All of them will need to play their part if they're to survive the next few months. This hazel branch will make an excellent spear. Within the clan, tool making skills and knowledge are passed down from one generation to the next. There are subtle differences between the tools used by this clan and Neanderthals elsewhere in Europe. Proof that clans rarely interacted. The dominant female strengthens her spear in the flame. It's an effective weapon, but not a new one. It's been around for half a million years, even longer than the Neanderthals themselves. The isolated existence of clans had a direct effect on their development. Limited interaction meant there was little chance to exchange new ideas and techniques. The result was that Neanderthal tools changed little in 250,000 years. The dominant male uses tree resin to fix the point to the shaft of his spear and sinew to bind it. It's a sophisticated weapon capable of lacerating the thickest hide but it's too heavy to throw very far and exposes him to the dangers of close quarter hunting. Were Neanderthals capable of innovation? Did they have the cognitive skills to develop new ways of doing things? Buried in the archaeological record is tantalizing evidence that they did. 35,000 years ago, a remarkable transformation took place. Neanderthal tool-making techniques began to change as well as stone, they started to use antler, bone, and even teeth. For the first time, they began to make not just tools, but decorative items like jewelry. Some scientists believe that this is evidence of a revolution in their thinking. But it may be too convenient that this great leap forward coincided with the arrival of the Cro-Magnons. The Neanderthals may simply have been copying Cro-Magnon techniques without ever grasping what these signs and symbols really meant. <laughs> 